Hi, for those that are new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a hospital pharmacist. And today I'll be going over different IV medications, how to verify an antibiotic order, how to verify different IV bags that are compounded or made by the technicians. So let's get started. So today I'll be going over four different types of IV bags you would see as hospital pharmacists. So one of them is a mini bag, IV duplex bag, one of those pre-made bags, and the ones that are compounded. Before we even go over these different types of IV bags, first let's go over how to verify an order. So on top of my head, let's say we have a doctor puts in an order for ceftriaxone, 2 grams, Q12 hours. So first thing first, always check for allergies. You know, I want to see and double check, do they have any penicillin allergies? If they have in the past, what kind of reaction? If it's a true allergy and you're concerned, I would start to look through their chart and see if they've ever received ceftriaxone in the past. Um, if they received it before in the past, they're able to tolerate it, then I'd be okay with, check with verifying. So after you check the allergies, you want to double check, okay, is this dose frequency, is it appropriate? So right off the bat, you know, your alarms are going to go off. You think, huh, normally ceftriaxone is always Q24 hours. Does this patient have meningitis? That's one of the few rare cases you'll see ceftriaxone 2 grams Q12 hours. So I would check their chart, double check to make sure if the patient has meningitis or some kind of special indication that requires Q12 hours and I would double check my resources and make sure that it's an appropriate dose and frequency. So after that's done, I would check the administration time. So let's say the patient just came from the ER, he's being admitted, I'm verifying his orders. Oftentimes when they're in the ER, they're going to get that first dose there. So it's really important that you go and check their chart and see if they got a dose already. Just because when the doctor puts in an order, the computer system might auto-populate a specific time. So let's say for us, every Q24 hours, it's going to automatically put it for nine o'clock in the morning. But let's say the patient got it right before they got admitted and they already got a dose at six o'clock in the morning. You know, we don't want them to get another dose three hours later. So it's important that you check if they already got a dose, you retime it just so that there's no inappropriate second dose. Don't forget, as pharmacists, we have to double check if the dose is renal adjusted or hepatically adjusted. Always double check that. Also check to see if certain antibiotics need to, or medications need to be using special weights. So for acyclovir, it's always adjusted body weight. Lastly, I would check to see, you know, does OmniCell have that medication that they're requesting already? So for us, ceftriaxone at our facility, we do IV push, so the vials are already in the OmniCell. So if it's not already in the OmniCell or they're all out, I would queue and prompt the system to alert the text to deliver some at their next round. So that's an example of how I would go through an order. Some of my thought process, what I would do, and yeah. So now let's get into the different IV bags. So first off, we have mini bags. This is what they look like. There's either a dilly one, so like a D5 or an S bag. They either come as 50 cc bags or 100 cc bags. And there's always a vial attached to it, which is the medication that they're requesting. Um, could be like Unison or Zosin, etc. So oftentimes in a hospital, our technicians will batch and make a large batch of these antibiotics just because they're so commonly used. So when you're checking their batch of mini bags that the technicians have made, it's important to double check, um, are they appropriate? So some drugs like ampicillin, it's only compatible with NS. So if you see the technician um, batch a couple of ampicillin bags and they use D5, well, you can't use that bag. 
And also these Daily Wins, the D5 or an S, they come in a large package bag. I'll try to find a reference picture. If not, then, you know, I'll try to explain as much as I can. So once the technicians remove all these different bags from the packaging, that's when you have to uh, note the expiration of all these bags. If they are 50 cc bags, those bags that have been opened will expire in 15 days. If they are 100 cc bags, they will expire in 30 days. So you have to make sure and double check that the technicians um, put the right expiration on each bag. And then the vial itself, you have to check the expiration of that vial too. So you have to make sure that the vial that they use to compound the mini bag, they're not expired. Otherwise, it's useless. With every medication that gets dispensed, there needs to be two initials. One from the technician or whoever made or compounded it, so if a pharmacist made it, their initials. And then the whoever the pharmacist that checks those bags. So there's always two signatures no matter what. And lastly, before you dispense out the mini bag, make sure that the seal is not broken. So here is an example video of how a mini bag is used. It's really cool. I, I thought it was interesting when I first saw it as a student. Um, the nurses essentially snap that section in between the bag and the vial. And then um, it releases the contents of the vials in the solution and allows the nurse to mix it together. And that's how they give the medication. Next we have is a duplex bag. So these are interesting. I just fairly learned about them recently because our hospital started to um, receive more of these duplex bags. So with these duplex bags, um, the components are separated but they're in the same bag. So example is here. So the bottom is the drug, the top is the solution like NS or D5. And what the nurses essentially have to do is that they have to twist the bag and then eventually um, it punctures and the two of the different, the drug and the solution mixes together in that bag. So with this, it's a little different. We have to note the expiration on the bag. We have to write on our label, you know, expires so-and-so hours after mixing. So depending on what drug it is, it's going to be different. Some it's going to expire after 24 hours of mixing. Some it'll expire after 48 hours. So you really have to look up um, the expiration and make sure that it's accurate for what the technician wrote on there. Hospital pharmacists, we have a reference sheet that we go off of just to make sure it's standardized and it's accurate. And of course, before we dispense it, we have to make sure, you know, is it the right drugs, right dose that's requested of the doctor? Does it match the label? Is the bag expired at all? Is everything intact? Is the bag not mixed? Then it's ready to go. Next, we have the pre-made bags. So these are easy, more straightforward. These IV bags are already pre-made. They're already pre-mixed. So all the nurses have to do is just open, rip open the bag and administer it to the patient. You have to double check the bag, see if it's expired or not. Is it the right drug that's requested on the label? Do they match? You know, pretty similar to the duplex bag. The only thing that's different is that on the label for the expiration, instead of writing, you know, expires blank hours when mixing, because it's already mixed, the labels say um, expires so-and-so hours after opening. This could be different from different facilities. So when I was an intern at a small community hospital, we would open the bag and write the actual date the bag expires on. At my current hospital, we don't open the bag. We staple the label on top of it. And we note when it would expire if open. Because there are times where, you know, patient gets discharged early or they transfer to a different unit and the bag doesn't get used. So it kind of saves our facility time and money. We can just get that bag back. It hasn't been opened yet, so it's still viable. Lastly, the most complicated bag is IV compounded medication. So let's say this is daptomycin, IV iron bags, banana bags. What the technicians usually do is that they get the vial, they have to reconstitute it with the correct diluent, either sterile water, NS, D5, whatever it's in the package insert. Make sure that they do the correct calculations, the correct amount is added into the bag, again, either D5 or NS, and that the dose is correct. None of the components like the vial, the bag that's in use, the sterile vials, those aren't expired as well. 
And is there any particulates in there that's floating in the bag? Sometimes the valves could be punctured and they could get into the bag. And is the Beyond Use Day correct on the label? Depending on your facility's IV room, this could vary. So I recommend you check and look up USB 797. For my current hospital, our Beyond Use Day is 12 hours and we're in the process of getting a new IV room, so that would change as well. So meaning for us, currently, every medication that's compounded in our IV room will expire in 12 hours. So in addition to your IV room, it's also important what type of IV medication it is because some have a shorter beyond use date regardless of the IV room. So medications like Bactrim or Lecosamide, when you compound those, they have a shorter beyond use date. Some are four hours, some are six hours, so you always have to double check. So as an intern, I used to compound and make the IV medications myself. So uh, a reference I like to use was Global RPH. It's a handy reference. It kind of tells you, you know, quick TLDRs of, you know, what bag to use, what's compatible, what's not compatible, which drugs, what would the beyond use dates typically be. Um, so if you're still starting out and you don't remember, then it's an easy, quick reference to Google.